We thank you that we can come to you today and worship and praise. We thank you, Lord, that no matter where we are this morning, we can celebrate the truth that Jesus is alive. We, we thank you, Lord, for this Resurrection Sunday. I pray, Lord, that this would be one of the most uh, impactful, one of the most powerful uh, Resurrection Sundays that, that our nation has ever known. Lord, I pray that as the body of Christ this morning floods uh, the, so, the social media and, and, and the internet and, and, and everything, and just even our neighborhoods, Lord, we can step outside our door and, and just testify that Jesus is alive this morning, that everything we say and do this day bring honor and glory to your name, Lord, the name that we adore, the name that is above all names, the name of Jesus. And it's in that name that we pray this morning. Amen. Uh, good morning, church. Uh, happy Easter. Jesus is alive. It's a, it's a wonderful Resurrection Sunday. And uh, I, I'm here in, this, in the sanctuary this morning. I haven't really been here in a while. And uh, I'll talk about that maybe a little bit later. But uh, it's wonderful to be in this service today. And, and each week as we're doing this online, I'm, I'm kind of getting used to some different uh, ways of communicating with you and, and the opportunity to just uh, stay connected with you one way or another. And I thought it was important to be here in the sanctuary today. I haven't been recording these from the sanctuary. Uh, I've been doing them from different locations, as, as you know. Um, and, and we don't stream our service live. And one of the reasons we don't stream our service live is because the, the technology, the internet out here in the country is just not good enough uh, to sustain that live video feed. So. So we've been recording these messages in advance and then, and then uploading them um, to the internet, to the Facebook page and, and the web page and things like that. So, And that's what we're doing today. But I thought just to get into the flow of Easter, I wanted to be here in the sanctuary. And I thought it might help me a little bit because speaking to an empty room is a little bit... A little bit disconcerting. It's just, it's just awkward. It's just weird for me. So I thought maybe if I could have a live studio audience here this morning, it, it might help me um, just get into the flow of things a little bit. So, so let me just show you just a little behind the scenes look. Let me just show you our live studio audience this morning. We're going to read a few verses here, uh, verses one through eight, specifically in Matthew chapter twenty-eight. I'll read, and you can follow along this morning. Uh, it says this, Now after the Sabbath, as the first day of the week began to dawn, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. His countenance was like lightning, and his clothing, was, his, his clothing as white as snow. And the guards shook for fear of him and became like dead men. But the angel answered and said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen as he said. Come, see the place where the Lord lay. And go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And indeed, he is going before you into Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. So they went out quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to bring his disciples' word. Amen. I love that in that text right there, uh, it says that they ran from the tomb with fear and great joy. Uh, we hear so much right now about not reacting in fear and not being governed by fear, which is true. That's a, that's a Christian truth. Um, we're, we're, we're told not to be afraid so many times in Scripture. And, and I continue to believe that the reason we're told over and over again to not fear is because fear is such a natural reaction for the Christian. And, and I think seeing the, the, the disciples and seeing uh, Mary Magdalene running from the tomb with Mary and, and they're running with fear and great joy. And I, I just think even right now for us, we're experiencing so many things that we're uncertain about. There's, there's things going on all, all around us and we don't know what's going on. And it's natural to have different emotions. This, this is Resurrection Sunday. We can have great joy and still there's uncertainty about what's going on around us. They had fear and great joy. But every time we see fear in the Bible, we see reassurance. In the next verses, Matthew 28, 9 and 10. It says this, and as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them saying, rejoice. So they came and held him by the feet and worshiped him. 
Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brethren to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. So every time we see fear, there's always a reassurance. Do not be afraid. And I love that Jesus, the first thing he said to them, uh, what he first thing he said was rejoice. And then the next thing he said was he showed care for them. He showed concern for them. It wasn't so much, hey, I told you I would be back. I told you after three days. He could have said, I told you this was coming. Uh, I, I did what I said I was going to do. No, his first concern was for them. He said, do not be afraid. So on this Resurrection Sunday, I want to remind you, you're, you might be experiencing different emotions today. You might be today celebrating resurrection, and you might have great joy, but there still might be some fear, some uncertainty. We as Christians are not governed by that fear. We're not controlled by that fear. And we have Jesus right now, even in the midst of celebrating Him, He's coming to us and He's reminding us, do not be afraid. This is indeed Resurrection Sunday, and I think this may be one of the most important Easter celebrations uh, that we've had in the American church in, in many generations. I think this Sunday, I think we can mark this Easter season, this resurrection celebration as a, as a time that is pivotal, pivotal for our nation, for our communities, and for our churches. I think it is such an important time. And I, and I don't want to. I don't want to overstay it here. But again, I think certainly in my lifetime, I just I cannot remember a more important opportunity for the church to speak to the world uh, with the advancement of technology and and, and with no other options. And, and I, I don't want to say this. I hope that we never become accustomed of not going to church. I hope we're never comfortable with the idea of not gathering together. I know it's, it's driving me crazy to not be with you on this day. I, it, it's just nuts. And, and I can't really tell. What, <laughs> during the week, I don't know what day it is. I don't know what time it is. Without Sunday to mark my week, uh, everything just seems upside down and backwards. And I hope that we never, never get comfortable with the idea of not meeting. With that said, I thank God that we have different ways. I thank God for the technology that we have available at this time, that we can communicate with one another, and that we can, we can just flood the world today uh, through social media and, and through texts and phone calls and, 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 and through our neighborhoods. We can just sing praise to our Lord, and we can shout to the whole world that Jesus Christ is alive. And sometimes that message might be confined within the walls of buildings like this. But right now, we're, we don't have the privilege of being here. So we can go to the whole world. And there is no end to the reach of the church today. Oftentimes, the, the reach of the church is limited to in this building. But right now, there is no end. And there is no boundary. Because we are, we are taking every avenue we have and every opportunity we have to tell the world that Jesus Christ is alive. And I think that's what makes this one of the, the greatest and most important Easter's. I also think this is a, is a very important Easter because for those of us who do normally gather together, I want us to take this time, this time today that we're not together, and I want us to reflect on what it is that's so important about being together. I want us to reflect on what it is that's so important about this day. And so I've got five things, five things about Resurrection Sunday, five reminders about Easter that I want, to take, I want you to take today and I want you to think about them. And when the opportunity for us to return together does come and it will come, I want you to remember these things in your heart. Number one today, number one today if you're taking notes, uh, I want you to know that Easter is every day and it is everywhere. And when I talk about Easter, and I, and I might use the phrase Resurrection Sunday, I might say Easter. When I say Easter, I want you to know that I'm not talking about the commercialized holiday. Uh, I'm not talking about um, the, some of the wonderful things that we do, that maybe the Easter bunnies and the Easter eggs and the family gatherings and getting all dressed up. That's not what I'm talking about. The resurrection, the celebration of our risen Savior is every day and it is everywhere. It is not bound to a date on a calendar and it is not bound to a building. It's every day, it's everywhere. Now I can see to you this morning, and I already said this, but I'll say it again, that it's awful that we're not together. I hate that we're not together this morning. I also know, and if we're honest with ourselves, I know that much of what's awful, much of what we hate about not being together are the things that are 
secondary. We, we hate not being together because we love getting dressed up in our Easter finest. Nothing wrong with that. We, we hate not being together because uh, we, we want to have the Easter egg hunt with the kids and, and we want to have dinner with the family. There's, there's nothing wrong. Those things are wonderful things. But that's not what this day is about. Those things are secondary. The primary importance of this day is to remember that our Savior was dead and buried and three days later he rose again and that he lives. That's what this day is about. And we know that that's the primary importance of this day. And we also know that the power of the resurrection and the importance of the resurrection is not bound by the calendar. It's not bound by this building. In fact, the resurrection is not a day we celebrate. In John chapter 11, verse 25, it says this, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. So the resurrection is not a holiday. The resurrection is not a day on the calendar. The resurrection is not something we go to a place and celebrate. The resurrection is Jesus Christ. He says, I am the resurrection. I know, I know that there are things right now that we are missing out on. I was thinking a lot this week and I spoke to some of them. I was thinking a lot about um, the youth, uh, particularly the senior class right now. And I was thinking back to my senior year in high school and some of the memories that I have even now of, of being a senior in high school and playing my last game in, in, in a certain sport. And, and just going through those memories with my senior class. And as I think about those kids, I know that, I know that there are some things right now that they're missing out on. And, and we can't turn back the clock on that. And, uh, and I do pray for those, uh, those young people. And I, and I believe the ones that, that are in this church in particular, I, I know that they're going to move on. And they've got good heads on their shoulders. And I believe that many of them love the Lord. And, and they, understand, um, uh, they understand what's going on. And they know that, that they have a life ahead of them and they're going to be okay. But I, I don't want to downplay that there are things that are being missed. As, as the world's on hold dealing with this pandemic, I know that there are things that we're missing out on. And we can't go back and we can't relive those moments. But the resurrection is not one of them. The resurrection is something we live every day. We celebrate it every day as Christians. And, and I want to tell you right now, I don't know when it's going to be, but we will come back together. We will be in this place again. And the next time we're in this place is going to be Resurrection Sunday. It may not say April 9th on the calendar or April whatever the day of Easter is this year. It, it, but whatever the calendar says, it's going to be Resurrection Sunday in this place. We are going to remind ourselves that celebrating and remembering and living in the power of the resurrection is not something that happens once a year in the spring. It happens every day for the Christian. Number two, Easter is the reminder of Jesus' triumph over sin and death. Let's read in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 54 and 55. It says this, So when this corruptible has put on incorruption, and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your sting? O death, where is your victory? How special these verses are to me this Easter. And it doesn't matter if, if you're here or not here. Sometimes the, the emotion is so overwhelming. I really haven't been in this place much since mom passed. No specific reason. But the last time that we were in church, that was uh, the last Sunday that mom was with us. It was the end of that week, Saturday, that she passed. And the next day was the first Sunday uh, that we missed church because of uh, the, the coronavirus. And, and ever since then, I've been thinking about standing in this place on Easter Sunday and mocking death by saying, Oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, death, where is your victory? Resurrection Sunday is the reminder to us that Jesus has triumphed over sin and death and the grave. And it's, it's so wonderful to be in this place this, this morning and to share this on video with you. And we're not going to edit this out. This emotion is real and it's raw. And I'm so, so happy to be able to stand before you and, and proclaim, Oh, death, 
Where is your sting, O oh, death? Where is your victory? See, as Christians, we do not look at life or death the same as everyone else. I know as a Christian that my life is not my own. Everything that I do in this life is a response to what Christ has done for me. Specifically, the resurrection, his death, his burial, and his resurrection. Everything I do in my life, I'm responding to him. My life is not my own. And in a culture where we're constantly told to live our life, find our truth, do what pleases ourselves as a Christian, that's not how we view life. This life is not my own. We don't, do, we don't view death the same way that everyone else views death. Death is not just the natural end of life. In, in fact, for the Christian, we know that death, it, it's a reminder that we've been separated from our Creator. We know that we were not created to die. When God put Adam and Eve in that garden, He never meant for them to experience death. And so death for us is a reminder that we've been separated from our Creator by our sin. But also as Christians, we don't view death as the end itself. We know that as Christians, we don't experience death, but we pass from, life, from death to life, and we enter into the presence of our Savior. And we know that because He lives, we too shall live. Oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, death, where is your victory? Death and sin and Satan have no power over the body of Christ. And it's with great, great joy that on this Easter Sunday I proclaim that victory and that truth for my mom. And for all those who have gone before, in Jesus' name, amen. Number three, Easter reminds us of the good that can come out of a bad situation. How must the disciples have felt after Jesus died on the cross? When Jesus died on that cross and was buried, what, did, what was going through their minds? What was going on in their heart? How could they have felt at that time? Here he is, the man that they had followed and loved, their, their, their rabbi, their teacher, their friend. And now he was dead and he was buried. I think for us, this is a perfect time for us to consider this truth. In the midst of, of, of this global pandemic and the upheaval that's all around us and, 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 and the, the, the harm to people's lives, the sickness, the death, the, the loss of jobs, the, the, the things going on in our economy, the uncertainty around us. But as Christians, we are constantly reminded that the, the good that can come out of a bad situation, no matter what is going on, no matter what's happening, we know what is coming. In Romans 8, 28, it says this, And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are, who are the called according to His purpose. So as, as someone who loves God, as someone who is called according to His purpose, I know that what's going on right now is going to work out for good for me. I know it. It's a truth. And I know this because I can look to the, the cross and I can say, Man, it didn't look good that day, but three days later it looked really good. And for the disciples that day, that when, when Jesus died on that cross, they could not have known. They could not have fully understood. But when they look ahead three days and they see that Jesus is alive, it reminds us that no matter what the struggle is, and no matter what the situation is, there's always something good for us coming. I, I, I love that it's an old sermon. I believe it's Tony Campolo that, that would, would that preach the sermon. It was this, it's Friday, but Sunday's coming. It's Friday, but Sunday's coming. And there's such a great story behind him preaching that message. But I love those words, and I always think of those words. And maybe right now for us, it looks like it's Friday. The dark point of that Friday when Jesus was placed in that tomb. And, and for us right now, it may seem like Friday in the midst of this pandemic and, and so much uncertainty. We're separated from loved ones, and we're separated from gathering as a church. It's Friday, but Sunday is coming. There is something good coming from this. There is something good coming for our church. There's something good coming for our community. I believe that. And I believe that, that Jesus is working this together for our good. And that's a truth and that's a reality that we have. I don't want to downplay the struggles. I know the struggles are real. 
As I said, I was thinking a lot about the, the senior class and some of the students, the things that they're missing out on, but it's not just the students. I know for everyone there, there are things going on right now. I, I think about the people working in healthcare. I think about the teachers who have been displaced from their students. I, I, I think about loved ones that can't see parents and grandparents right now because of safety reasons. I know that the struggles are real, but I also know that the struggles are temporary. It's Friday. But Sunday is coming. Number four, we have a power in us greater than anything we could face. And the resurrection is a reminder of that. Romans chapter 8 verses 9 through 11 says this, But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. Now if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he is not his. So let's start there. Are you a Christian? If you are a Christian, if you are His, you have the Spirit of Christ in you. If you do not have the Spirit of Christ in you, you are not His. That would be the first step today, to, to call upon the name of Jesus as Lord and Savior. And, and at that moment, you have the Spirit of Christ in you, and you are His. It says again this in verse 9, Now if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he is not His. And if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. So that spirit, the Holy Spirit of God living in us, the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, the same power that raised Jesus from the dead, we have that power in us. We have a power in us that is greater than anything we could face. Anything we could face. No matter what the situation is. It might be the everyday struggles of a teenager at school. It might be struggles with your, with your marriage, your home, your family. It might be struggles at your job. No matter what it is that you're facing, Easter is a reminder that we have a power in us. What power is that? It's the same power that raised Jesus from the dead. And that power in us tells us that there's nothing in this world that we can face that we cannot overcome through Christ Jesus our Lord. Number five, our final point this morning, yes and amen. Second Corinthians chapter one, verse 20 says this, for all the promises of God in him are yes and in him, amen. Let me read it this way. For all the promises of God in him, Jesus are yes and in him, Jesus, amen, to the glory of God through us. Uh, you know, if you know me very well, you know that I love sports. I've played sports my whole life, and, and I've been a fan of sports. And something I love in sports is, is when you see an athlete or a competitor uh, call their shot. Uh, or, or maybe they'll guarantee victory. Uh, you have uh, Broadway, Joe Namath, he, he guaranteed victory in the Super Bowl, and, and, and they did indeed win. Such an iconic moment in sports history. Uh, we, have a, uh, we have Babe Ruth at Wrigley Field uh, pointing to the bleachers in the outfield and, and, and famously saying, I'm going to hit one right out there. And then he did. He hit a home run right where he was pointing. Uh, one of my favorite stories in this regard is, is the, uh, the, some of the stories of Larry Bird and how Larry Bird would often tell his defender exactly what he was going to do before he would do it. He would say to the defender, he would say, I'm going to catch the pass right here, and I'm going to come off the screen, and I'm going to head to the corner, and when I get to the corner, I'm going to rise up, and I'm going to take a jump shot. And then he would do that very thing, and he would hit the shot. And regardless of the fact that, that the defender knew what was coming, he would, he would tell them, this is what's coming. And they knew what was coming, but they still could not stop him. I, I, for some reason, that always gets to me. I love, I love hearing stories like that. But there's nothing, nothing in the history of sports, nothing in the history of the world that compares to the shot that Jesus called. Jesus told everyone what was going to happen. And then it did. In Luke chapter 9, verse 22, Jesus speaking says this, The Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and chief, and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised the third day. He told everyone what was going to happen. He told him he was going to suffer many things. He told him he was going to die on that cross and that he was going to raise after three days. He said, destroy this temple. And he's speaking of his body. He said, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. He called his shot. 
The most unbelievable thing in the history of the world that a man could say, I'm going to die, and then three days later, I'm going to raise myself from the dead. And that's what he did. And when I think of the promises of God, how can I know that these promises will come to pass? How can I know that the promises of God's word, how can I know that the promises for my family, how can I know that the promises for this community, how can I know that the promises for this church, how can I know that the promises for all those who love the Lord, how can I know that those promises will come to pass? When we're in a situation like we're in right now, and a pastor says something like this, hey, all things are working together for good, sometimes those words can seem so empty. How can we know? We know the resurrection is, is, is a reminder for us that all the promises of God in Christ Jesus are yes and amen. And we have simply this, he called his shot. He told everyone, I'm going to suffer many things and I'm going to die, but on the third day I'm going to raise from the dead. So every time we remember the resurrection, you can know that the promises of God are yes and amen. If you ever ask yourself, does that promise apply to me? The answer is yes and amen in Christ Jesus. Is that promise for now? The answer is yes and amen in Christ Jesus. Is that promise for my family? Is the promise of restoration? Is the promise of redemption? Is the promise of blessing for a thousand generations? Is that for me? Is that for my family? The, pro the, the answer in Christ Jesus is yes and amen. And you don't have to doubt it because Jesus called his shot. And he did indeed die. And on the third day he rose from the dead. And if he could do that, you can be assured that every promise will come to pass. Every promise that God has spoken to you through His Word. Maybe you're holding on to a promise right now. Maybe you're holding on to a promise from someone that you're separated from. Maybe you're holding on to a promise uh, for, for your family to be restored. Maybe you're holding on to a promise for, for some prodigal son or daughter. Maybe you're holding on to a promise uh, for your community. Maybe you're holding on to a promise for your workplace. Whatever the promise is, and, and, and you're wondering, will it come to pass? I don't know, I have this promise, but will it come to pass? The answer in Christ Jesus is yes and amen, because on the third day he rose from the grave. And if he can do that, he can fulfill every word that he's spoken to us, and he will. I thank you for this time this morning, church. I thank you that you spent some moments with us. It's been so powerful for me to be in this house today. The emotion of it's almost over. I miss being here with you. As the, as the, the, the young family quarantine singers were, were worshiping with us this morning, I was just overwhelmed. I was overcome with joy to just be in this place and hear this music. And, and, I, and if you're wondering were any, any uh, county health codes violated, no, they were not violated. They, they've been together. I don't know how they've done it, but they've been together this time. And they've been, they've been uh, quarantined with each other. And that's why I asked them to come and sing today. If they're, if they're infected, they've all, they're all infected. So uh, I, I, I just wanted them to worship for us and to lead us in that moment. And I can tell you, as I was sitting here and listening, I was overcome. And church, I hope wherever you are today, I hope wherever you are today, you will take a moment, whatever it is, to sit with your family, to reach out to a loved one, maybe just to yell out your window, and to, and, to, and to rest in this truth that Jesus Christ is alive. And I want you to know that every promise that's been spoken into your home and into your family through the Word of God, every promise in Jesus Christ is yes and amen. And we have that assurance because on the third day, Jesus rose from the dead. I'm going to close this morning with a prayer, and then I'm just going to ask them to sing one more song this morning. And they're going to tell us that death could not hold him. They're, they're going to tell us that, he, that, that Jesus Christ has no rival. And they're going to sing about the beautiful name of Jesus this morning. And I pray that if, if you're a singer, sing along. If you're not a singer, sing along. Find some way to worship with us here this morning as we declare what a beautiful name, the name of Jesus. Father, we love you. We thank you for this day. We thank you for the reality of our risen Savior. We thank you that we can sing Jesus lives. That we can worship a risen Savior. I thank you, Lord, that, that we have these reminders of the power of the resurrection, the reality of the resurrection, and that nothing, nothing can change what is in Christ Jesus for the church. The, the truth, uh, the truth that Jesus lives, nothing can change that. And nothing can take that away from us. I pray, Lord, this morning as we close, I pray that this 
celebration would never end. That the, that the celebration of our risen Savior is not bound by time or space. And that we would continue to sing and worship throughout this day and every day to come. And that our worship would always, always be the beautiful name of Jesus. That we would be clear that it is the name above all names. That Jesus Christ is the King of kings and Lord of lords. And it is His name that we worship this morning. And it's in that name that we close this morning. It's in that name that we pray. In the name of Jesus.